Dink, 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 dink. Welcome coffee. back to the Jen Julian Podcast. Welcome back. Welcome back to our TV show. We're on TV. This week, first ever, we're not uploading to YouTube, we're uploading to cable. <laughs> Find us on your local channels. I don't think that's how that works. I've bought us a spot. Oh. 30 seconds cost me 10 grand. Wow. Is that... It's, o- it's only airing in Arizona. <laughs> Good luck finding it. <laughs> All of that was a lie. This episode is brought to you by Farmer's Dog, guys. Start feeding your dog food that they will love, enjoy, and also thrive because of Farmer's Dog is food specifically made for your doggo, okay? Like delicious food, uh, human-grade food, in fact. Uh, basically, the process is really simple, but they fit you and your pet out with uh, food that's perfect for them, and you can get... Free shipping, 50% off your first two-week trial of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash Jenna Julian, or hit the link below. The Skim is also a sponsor today, guys. An amazing service, completely free. News is really hard. They make it easy. Go to The Skim, that's T-H-E-S-K-I-M-M, two M's, dot com slash Jenna Julian. Enter your email, subscribe, easy peasy. You're also entered to win a gift card. Super nice deal. And Postmates, something we use literally every day to order food, to order food, and also sometimes to order food. Uh, it's a really great app. And right now, go to Postmates in the app store, download it, use code Julian. You get $100 off free delivery credit for your first seven days. Uh, check out the information in the description as well. Kermit, don't be wandering, okay? All right, Kerm. Yeah. Everybody Bunny just barked at the Iggy's because she's sitting in her bed in the corner. We were working with some high value treats to get up the stairs just now. So she smells like treats. So the Iggy's walked over there and Bunny was like, Get out. She was like, leave me alone. Okay. I've I've already humored my owners enough to come up and do this whatever podcast thing this is. I'll sit. Kermit, don't go Kermit, over there. You Kermit, leave her alone. Kermit, get in your bed. Can you put him in his bed? <laughs> put the rat in its in its hole. Welcome to the first minute of the Jenna and Julian podcast where we wrangle our dogs every week. Go. Sit. Good boy. You guys, you need to learn to listen like on set, okay? Sit. I'm the director, okay? Quiet on set, in your bed. Marble always listens. Well, I don't think he's doing much listening. I think yeah, he's just kind of like... Yeah, look at him, he's listening. No, I think he's just like sitting there. No, he's listening. You know the term ignorance is bliss? Are you trying to describe I think for Marbles, guy? it's unawareness oh. is bliss. Lack of awareness is bliss. Guess what's happening on Wednesday? Mr. Marbles has a birthday. It's his 11th birthday. Damn. <laughs> I'm so excited. What did my mom say yesterday? She said marbles is almost as old as my celiac diagnosis. That's what I said. Oh, that's what you said. Yeah, because you were like, I got diagnosed 12 years ago now. And I was like, oh my God, marbles is almost as old as your celiac diagnosis. <laughs> that's funny. Marble, you're a funny guy, dude. Marble, you're funny you're a funny guy. guy. Hey, everyone in their place? Is Kermit? Okay, yeah. I'm just worried about Kermit. Sitting. He's the curious one. Yeah, she didn't hold back. She just was like, Whoa, yeah. <laughs> right in his face. <laughs> he's Get like, out of here. He's like, should be scared of that, but he's not. Yeah. Like, she'll bark at him. She'll, you know, he's just like, he doesn't care. Yeah. He walked underneath Bunny like a bridge yesterday. Mm-hmm. And cried under and her. And cried under her. No, because if you're paying attention to Bunny, if he stands under her, then you'll hear his crying for sure. What a weird guy. He's like, you know, he's like that little shrimpy guy. He's. Get in your bed, Peach. Oh. oh my God. Oh no, 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 no. She just turned around in like eight Four circles. circles. Yeah. Dogs be like, I don't know. What's that? What's that about? Dogs walking around in circles before they lay down. Am I right? Airplane food. Back more next week. Come uh, come watch my show. Yikes. Well, first of all, I want to wish a special happy, happy vacation to the Debbie machine. She works so hard all the time. Makes our lives so much easier With and is a podcast. wonderful mother to you. She is. And, she's uh, in Italy. She's in Italy. And she, uh, yeah, happy vacation to Machine. She sent us the machine. cutest email. It was really cute. It was like such a cute update. Like a family update email where they tag all the families on the on the, on the the email chain. <laughs> you see all the email addresses and she's just, it's just really cute. She's eating lots of good food and doing lots of walking and enjoying herself. She's in her happy place. She's so cute. Um... Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing. We I've been really enjoying just like kind of chatting on the podcast, it's seeing fun. where the conversations go, and 
and I think we're getting kind of better at that, but something has happened. I know, Julie. And it needs to be addressed. I know. Well, it happened live last night, It too. happened live last night. On Twitch. Thanks on to one of our... On a website called twitch.tv. Our viewers. Slash Jonah Julian. Do you yeah. remember who it was that I think his that? name... I think his name... It started with Daddy's. I think it's Daddy's... I want to say like... Mm, we can watch the VOD, but... I got to watch the VOD, but it's Daddy's something. You know who you are, and thank you. Shouts out to my dude who made me aware of this... Absolute, absolute travesty that's been happening to me. It's been afflicting me in my life for oh, the last 24 hours. You know, I don't think that that's, I think that's I think a affl- I think affliction is the right term for it. Mm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. If that's... I, need to, I need to get a nice little sip of Gatorade. And, uh... That's an unnecessary prerequisite to whatever uh, story you're about to Stretch it out. Get ready. Everyone... You know where your pitchforks are? Just have them at a very easy place to grab. It's just you, my guy. Okay, got our pitchforks. All right. <laughs> Here we go. I actually wrote a letter. Well, what do I do? Do I explain the situation first? And then yeah, you got to explain right. the situation. So I have been making cooking videos for the last few months, and I've really enjoyed them. One thing that I needed to improve in my cooking videos is the fact that I had to turn around to use the stove and then turn back around to face the camera. Or I would, and or I would have to take my second camera angle and completely readjust it to, to look at the stove instead of the countertop. It was just a lot of extra work. And I didn't feel like it was a fun cooking experience when I'm not looking at camera and cooking. I'm doing one or the other. So I thought, hey, I watch Binging with Babish. He has the induction cooktop. Let's get that thing. Mm-hmm. Which one should I get? Obviously, the one he has, right? On his website, he has a really graceful list of, uh, you know, his affiliate links for all the gear he uses, camera, cookware, everything. So I was like, oh, all right. I bought the stand mixer, and I bought the, the induction cooktop. And I was like, great. Now I'm binging with Babish. Now I'm him. That's it. That's all it takes. I don't, I don't if you want to be him true. too, all you do is do that. I don't know if that's true. So I received both in one package. It took about four or five days. It was not Amazon Prime. I will say the induction cooktop was not Amazon Prime. The uh, Cuisinart stand mixer was, I think. Regardless, the cooktop wasn't. I take it out, open it. I'm like, yes, I got it. Yay. Don't think anything of it. Make my first video with the cooktop. It works. Heats up the pot. Fine. I post a video. I'm like super excited that I didn't have to turn around to use the stove. Fast forward like 20 hours and I'm streaming last night and I'm in chat, just reading chat, talking. And our boy comes flying in, galloping in on a horse into Twitch chat saying, hey, I watched your video and I wanted to see if you had something happen to you that happened to me after I bought that cooktop, because I'm assuming you bought it off of Babish's list on his mm-hmm. website. And I'm like, oh my God, I did. I clicked on the link, bought it, and now I have it. He was like, okay, well, the one you probably bought was the Induxpert 1800 watt cooktop. That was the one that was in the link. That was the one. And that, that you purchased. You click the link, takes you to the Amazon page of the that product, the Induxpert cooktop. It's $130. I clicked buy, done. Ships to my house. I'm using it. He said... You probably bought the the one that I bought, which is the Induxpert. It was off his list, but they sent me a Cosmo. And I was like, wait a minute, Cosmo sounds familiar. Mine says Cosmo, I think. And I wasn't sure, but I was like, I thought I remember it saying Cosmo. And of course, I'm not going to think anything of it. Like you order something, you don't think to check that it's actually that thing. Especially the picture. After the picture, yeah, or the, the name of the model or whatever. Well, I also thought what you thought, that maybe it was just like a specific series a of series the, of it, in, yeah. Induxpert the Induxpert or Cosmo yeah. or something, yeah. Um, not to think that it was like, an entirely different cooktop. It was a different cooktop. And I only was made aware of this because the student chat was like, this happened to me. They scammed me. It's a actual, it's a 70, I think it's a 70, um, I thought it was like 50, $72 difference. Oh, difference. Okay. Yeah. I spent 130. It was 58, $72 difference. So I'm in chat, like kind of. So it's of, a scam. So they get, they get you to buy a high level cooktop, and then they send you a cheaper one. But in we're the mail. talking we're talking about Amazon here, right? Like a company worth billions and billions and billions of dollars, one that I use all the time, a service right. that I use all the time. I'm a proud Prime member. I use Prime for everything. I use Amazon Fresh. I use Amazon Pantry. Whatever, all the shit. Right. Prime Pantry. I'm just a 
all of what I own is from Amazon. Well, it's like if you bought like a name brand pasta and then they sent you like CVS pasta and you're like this, you know, it's still pasta, but I feel a little scammed right now. <laughs> if the name brand was $77 and the, and the CVS was $1. Yeah, totally. So it's just not right and it shouldn't happen. So it's not right. It shouldn't happen. I'm, so I'm in chat and I'm reading this and I'm like, oh my God. And I went and got my cook bar, cooktop and I was like, yep, it's Cosmo. I can't believe it. And I look up the Cosmo one, it's $58. I was like, holy shit. This is crazy. You I've just been scammed. Got had. I've been fucking scammed, dude. I got had. So the first thing I did was I DM'd Andrew, binging with Babish. I was like, hey, just want you to know. And hopefully he sees it. I don't know how totally often he not his. None of this is his. No, not at all. But I just figured I would try to make him aware. Like, hey, dude. Um, well, because now case, you know of two people. Now we know of two people, me and my boy in chat. Um, but I did, you know, I did look at the Induxpert reviews. I was hoping to find one that says, I got the Cosmo, what the fuck. Couldn't find a review that said that. All I saw was like, I got this because of Babish. I got this. You know, so a lot of people have gotten it. So good, good on them. Like, that's awesome. First thing I did was DM him. Hopefully he sees it. We'll see. Then I slept on it. And I was like, you know, this is sad. I'm kind of upset. This has really taken me for a ride. Aww. It's consumed my life. So I woke up this morning and I wrote a letter. It's a short but strongly worded letter. Oh, shit. And I go. wanted to read it to you guys on the podcast. <laughs> Try and control <clears throat> yourself, Julian. Okay. To whom it may concern, dear Amazon, I'm writing you today not because I have a love for you, which I do, but rather for another reason, one that is rather disappointing. And has thrown my life upside down for the last 24 hours. Okay, you know what? I like cooking. I really enjoy making new foods and putting my own spin on recipes. I would even refer to myself as somewhat of a chef. Chef Julian is my stage name. I recently decided to spend some money on a good induction cooker so I can look my audience in the eye while I cook the food. I ordered the Induxpert 1800-watt portable cooktop. I was referred to this product via an amazing YouTuber that goes by, Benching with Babish. He has a list of affiliate links of the products he uses on his website. I clicked buy now and waited patiently. It wasn't until it arrived that the nightmare would begin. Julian, there's been no nightmare for you. Speak for yourself. It's not a nightmare. You got scammed out of $70. And it's a nightmare. It works fine. Yeah, you just got. Yeah, but who knows how long it'll work for, or if it'll even explode. It'll still explode at some point. I was streaming live. I am a cam boy, and one of my viewers <laughs> made me aware of the fact that he had recently ordered the same exact cooktop off of the same website. There was only one problem: he received an entirely different item. Done, done, done. I wrote that. Um. <clears throat> One that said, instead of saying Induxpert across the middle of the cook surface, it says Cosmo. When I read his comment, I was first immediately intrigued because I remembered seeing Cosmo on mine as well. Upon first seeing it, I didn't think much of Cosmo. I thought it might be a series of the product. But when this gentleman brought it up in my chat room, I knew he was onto something. It turns out that this product https colon slash slash www.amazon.com slash gp slash product slash b o one m t l x eight five a slash r e f equals p p x underscore yo underscore d t underscore b underscore a s i n underscore title underscore o zero five underscore s zero zero question mark i e equal sign capital u t f eight and ampersand p s c equals one Upon being purchased, is being swapped out for a product seventy-two dollars and sixteen cents cheaper. HTTPS colon slash slash www.amazon.com slash Cosmo slash induction slash efficient slash countertop slash COS slash YLIC one slash DP slash BO. What? I'm linking people. Got it. Yeah, I gathered that. Can I finish or no? <laughs> Go ahead. I forgot where I was. You're ripping people off. Whether intentionally or unintentionally, it's happening, so I'm making you aware of this. Please help me get my proper cooktop that I paid for and ordered many days ago. Also, give me instructions on how I should dispose of the knockoff version you sent me. Love you. Talk soon. Julian. Thoughts? I didn't send it yet. It's in my drafts. <laughs> you didn't send it at all? Why not? Because I wanted to get the podcast thoughts. 
What do you guys think? No notes? Okay, I'll send it. It's very thorough. You have to be thorough. Last time I went through a problem with Amazon, I had to be thorough. I had to have my ducks in a row. Remember that, that whole thing oh, about the I pin remember. rack? I remember. Turns out I paid nothing for that pin rack because they gave me all my money back because it's broken. Right. It's broken. Right. For sure. Yeah, totally. Mm hmm. It's broken. Don't snarl at me. <laughs> Don't be a predator at me. I did that to Kermit, by the way, the other day, and he licked my teeth. Anyways. I know we don't edit the podcast, but cut. <laughs> you should send it, Julian. Okay, I'll send it literally well, right now. The guy yeah. that said that in chat, that it also happened to him, said that Amazon gave him a like a refund or like a, what do you call that? Yeah, they they made him whole from the first purchase but right. then he's back at square one he has a cooktop that he doesn't want and he doesn't have the cooktop that he wants who cares if he was refunded that's well, why can... i'm like annoyed like i don't want my money back i just want the thing i ordered right because if you give me my money back all i'm gonna do is buy it again and then ho hopefully maybe not get scammed this time but i still might like send me the right one and ensure that it's the right one and then we'll talk those are my demands Okay, I think that's reasonable. You could also give that one to your mom. She was really, she really liked it. Someone in chat was like, "Do a giveaway with the knockoff one." I was like, "What?" The? Honestly, yeah, why not? <laughs> hey guys, you know this shitty knockoff that I've been like, like so annoyed that Somebody I probably have? wants it. Giveaway time. But also, like, if it turns out that it does explode or something, it's it, not my fault. I'm giving it to you. Thank you. You it said probably, you wanted it. Probably explodes. I don't think it explodes. It's an induction cooktop. If it's not inductspert, it probably explodes. That is a wild claim that I don't think you can back up. I backed it up right now. I'll email your people my data and research. I think my only two senses about that uh, email that you worded to Amazon is that your life has not been a nightmare, Julian. Oh, just a, like a living nightmare. Day and night. Why two cents? I have way more to say than two cents. Here's my 45 cents. Here's my 33.3 cents. I own a third of this conversation now. <laughs> okay. Why two cents? Two cents is such a small amount of cents. I don't know. It's just Here are my two cents. Figure of speech. I don't want to listen. That's two cents. Here are my $20. Okay, what do you have to say? Wow, congratulations. You've just described bribing people. <laughs> <clears throat> So um, let me, I'll just send it right now. I need to find the Amazon um, customer service email. Amazon customer service. What are you doing? Email. I'm looking up Amazon customer service email. Uh, how do I co count, contact Amazon by email? 1 888 No, that's a phone. What? You've already gone down this road. I, I might have them on speed dial from last time. I'll look it up. I'm going to send it after the podcast, and I'll keep you guys posted. Maybe next podcast I can read their response. Why are you looking at me like that? You're something else, man. I'm, I'm honestly, like, I've heard of that happening, obviously, through other websites and things. When you buy stuff, and then they send you not at all really what you ordered, but, like, a cheap version of it. Yeah. But... I guess I've never really heard of that happening from Amazon. Me neither. So, it's for, it's the fact that it's from Amazon. I've been scammed before. Mm -hmm. I got scammed out of not a small amount of like dollars to when I was trying to buy one of those fucking hoverboards back in the day. I tried to. <laughs> I swear to God, I tried to buy it on Alibaba. Yeah, and then it just never comes. It never came. And yeah. yeah, that that has happened to me. And I know that exists on a lot of websites. But when you buy something off of those websites, you're kind of taking that risk. Mm. With Amazon, you're like, this is safe. Right, I have shipped. I have shipped so much shit to my house on Amazon. Yeah, and it's always come the right way. And when it hasn't, it's been a mistake or something. And I don't think there's someone at Amazon going, <laughs> "I'm gonna switch this one out and fuck this guy over." No, it's probably like a they group them together, and they're like, it's sort of like a nobody's looking over here. They look exactly the same. You know, let's save. Let's just kind of get rid of these ones, and see if anyone notices. Right? Who's gonna even get blamed for that? I have no idea. It's not like a small Etsy store where when you buy something, it's like, this package was fulfilled with love by Jane and then a heart by Jane. No, it's like, it's a fucking Amazon warehouse. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's no, I doubt there's like a lot of accountability going on. Mm. Otherwise, this shit wouldn't happen. 
I'd be pissed. I am pissed. I'm very pissed. Yeah. <sighs> Are you going to be okay? Yeah. Just, oh, I'm hot. Mm-hmm. You know? So hot. I'm hot. Your life is such a nightmare right now. <sighs> Thank God I have this cold Gatorade that I got from Postmates. Right now, if you use Julian. code Jen and Julian, you get $100 off delivery charge for the first seven days on Postmates. Guys, Postmates is a really great service. If you, you've never been on the app for whatever reason, I, th- I think it's worth just going on the app and looking around because you never know what in your area, A, exists, B, has food that you might want that you didn't know was there, or C, delivers right to your front door. That's what Postmates is. It's a really great service, um, and it, it's it's an optimized app. It's really nice. You buy the food, you order off the menu, you buy the food, and then you see on the map where your where your Postmate is in the process. Are they picking up the food? Are they driving to your house? Are they there? So it's something we use literally all the time. They're open every single day, 24 hours a day. There's always something delivering. It's really great. My favorite is when we start ordering from a place on Postmates because they have food or they're open or whatever, and then you eat it and you like it, and then... Years go by, and suddenly you're driving by, and you're like, oh, oh, that's where that is. Yes, that happens to us all the time. Look at that sign. Never would have imagined that it looked like that. Literally. Amazing. I, and I love that. People, there's probably a lot of people who are maybe restaurant purists who are like, oh, you got to have the experience and go there. No, I don't. I'm good. I'm good <laughs> never knowing where the restaurant is even. In fact, the less I, I know, the better. I think it's only true maybe if you live like in a city for a lot of people, it's not the case. You know exactly where that place yes, is. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so right now go to Postmates app in the app store, download it and use code Jenna Julian for $100 off delivery charge for the first seven days. Really worth it. Also, guys, if your dog likes delicious food, which I think they probably do, go to the Farmer's Dog. It's a really incredible service. We've been using it. We literally feed our dogs with Farmer's Choice Dog food of every single day. Um, what's great about Farmer's Dog is they personalize your dog's meal plan to your dog. Their eating habits, their size, their breed, uh, and their goal and target weight. So if you need to lose weight, gain weight for your dog, they'll help with all that. You fill out a brief questionnaire, answer some questions, and soon enough, they ship you a box of packaged food that you f- put a bunch in the freezer and you put a couple in the fridge so they're defrosted and you feed them out of the pouch. It's super easy to serve them. They love it. Can't say enough good things about Farmer's Dog. Also, really great customer service. They recently helped us switch Kermit and Peach's uh, calorie situation because we're trying to have them both drop about a pound because we're trying to hit that exact goal weight for them. Uh, but right now, you can check it out by going to the Farmer's Dog dot com slash Jenna Julian to get 50% off your first two weeks and shipping is free. Really, really awesome service. Would highly recommend. And also guys, get your news the right way with the skim. Go to the skim, T-H-E-S-K-I-M-M dot com. News is summarized perfectly and concise so you don't have to weed through the nonsense. They make it very easy and bite-sized for you. Okay. So you go to the skim.com slash Jenna Julian, sign up and click subscribe. Just enter your email and subscribe. It's completely free. That's it. And when you do that, you're entered to win a $250 Visa gift card. You learn about all the stuff going on in the world, the good, the bad, whatever it is, you need to know about it. And the skim makes it very, very readily available and easy to digest for you. Okay. You don't have to pay nonsense attention to whatever's going on with the news sites and Twitter and paywalls and whatever. Just go to the skim. It's so much easier. Check out the link below to get started with that. Thank you, sponsors. Gracias. Kermit, you have to sit, boy. De nada. Can you believe he's going to be 11? De nada. Of nothing. That translates to of nothing, right? Because mm-hmm. de is of and nada is nothing. Say um, thank you. Amazing. Say Gracias. You. No, say thank you to me. Thank you. Of nothing. That's what I'm going to say now. Not, not, you're welcome. Of nothing. Kermit. Why is he crying all the time? <laughs> he wants to sit up here, but he can't. Kermit's all the way down. In the bed. You're having a, he's having a bad little Kermit timer. Usually it's like right about an hour and he gets up and then he does this, but it has not been an hour, my guy. It's not time. It's my quiet sermon time. My dude, you need to lay down. God, my family came over yesterday, my brother, my mom, and my grandma. And he cried the whole time. Yeah, he cried the entire time. We were paying attention to Bunny because my mom and grandma had never met Bunny. And it was really fun. And just in the background, it was like just a static soundtrack. We were all like standing up in the kitchen at one point, And your grandma was still sitting at the kitchen table. And she, we just hear her go, is this all right? And we turn around and Kermit's just standing on the table in front of your grandma. <laughs> 
Oh, you man. were being a handful. God, get his nasty butt back in his bed. Don't. This is what encourages this behavior. He just wants to sit with he me. He bites you and you hug him. I so love you're like, good you. bite. I love you. He Carmen. cries and walks around. You hug him. Good, good crying. I good love complaining. You, he is. Peach, not us, right? <laughs> Anyways, not us. you got some trends for me, boy. Oh yeah. So I thought um, I was actually on Twitter, and you guys were helping <laughs> we were with laughing. podcast ideas. And I thought, yeah, what do you said? Uh, you should go about talk about some of the trends that you guys used to be in when you were younger. And I thought that was really funny because we were both into probably some. Pretty funny trends. I'm going to find their name. Uh, Ranger Shannon. Yeah. So worst trends that we were in. Well, do you have some or do you want me to start? I'll start. Well, okay, go ahead. <laughs> I'm joking. Sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah, you go ahead. Do your thing. No, you go ahead. I'd say one of my favorite ones it wasn't even that bad. Okay. I wore Sambas. They're like soccer shoes. Do you remember those? I remember those. Why, yeah. why is that bad? It's not bad. I just really liked them. I just remember everyone in school had them, boys and girls. And if you had Sambas, they were just They looked like, a little like Adidas, right? They did look just like Adidas. Yeah. And they were just a sneaker, but yeah. like everybody just had them. It, it was crazy. I feel, but, but I can't think of a ton of like cross-gender, cross-age trends that like everybody had, you know? Hmm. But that at my school was just one of them. Everybody wanted Sambas and everybody had them. Yeah. And my mommy got me a pair after a while because I was like, I really, really want them. That's so So funny. bad. A sneaker that wow. all like seven and eight year olds were like, I need it. That's so funny. I'm trying to think. I feel like that, like there was a sneaker like that for me too, but I can't remember like, I mean, Vans, but that's not a trend. That's mm. just like a popular shoe brand. The Sambas were like a very specific, like I don't even remember what brand they were or whatever, but th they were called Sambas. Mm -hmm. It was just, they were black and then they had three stripes up the side mm. and they were made out of like leather suede or something. So everyone's looked like shit because we lived in Rochester. So they would get covered in snow and salt and <laughs> wet and rain mm -hmm. and all the leather on the outside would get disgusting, but we all loved our Sambas. <laughs> Fuck it. We Fuck love it. them. Yeah, we love them. Damn, that's hype. They still sell those. You should get another pair for old time's sake. No, thank you. Okay. What about you? Uh, I wore pants that had zippers at the knees. Oh, hell yeah. And you could unzip the bottom leg of the pant, and then there were shorts. But what me would do would be unzip one leg and think I'd be really cool. So you had one leg that was a short and one leg that was a pant, essentially. Yes. When you zipped off the leg, did where did you put it? In your pocket. In your like cargo pocket? Yeah, Were they yeah. cargos? Some of them were. Wow. Actually, most of them were, yeah. You put it in the cargo pocket. That is cargo. It goes in the cargo pocket. So and then you, you walk around looking doper, dope as fuck. And doper, <laughs> dope as fuck. Dope as fuck. And lo looking better than everyone else. <laughs> because... One leg is business and one leg is also business, just longer. What's like the age group? Uh, <laughs> I want to say 11, 9 to 11. Mm. I was the coolest 9 to 11. Were you? Yeah, fuck yeah. Come on. What? <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> what do you think of my pant? I used to do, um, first of all, those like banana clips that we used to wear our hair in, so you'd put your hair in like a low ponytail and then twist it and then put a banana clip in so mm. that the top hair was just like hanging out to the top or the side. Yeah. Was dope as fuck. Dope as fuck. Um, oh, I just thought of one. Yes. But also tiny little like 90s butterfly clips. So you'd take like a little piece of hair and clip it here and then clip it here and clip it here and clip it here. So you just have like this little head of like beautiful Hell yeah. clips. And the big, like, Ariana Grande wears them now. Those, yes. Those yes. clips. But we used to wear those. Were they, for, like, were they pretty hip? They were hip. They were, but, like, people didn't wear... It's like, you know, when a trend comes back and they take all of the ugly part out of it and only do, like, the cute part. Yeah. That's Ariana Grande wearing those clips. Because when we wore them, they were, like, metal and silver and not super cute. Mm -hmm. And we used them for, like, when you put your hair up in a ponytail, you could 
take some bobby, like all this hair that falls out down here, it wasn't like a cute look. You mm -hmm. needed everything to be like up and like slicked up, but like your hair has breakage back here. So it just falls out and then that's a mess, yeah. right? So you could take some bobby pins and try and finagle it, but they wouldn't stay. But if you played like sports or something and you wanted that hair out of the way, you would take one of those clips and you put it back here like that. Or like, yeah, you could clip up your like side bangs like that, but they weren't like big and cute and i didn't have any that were like colorful ones really huh. like they had like a metallic sort of like pink or but they were metal yeah and they weren't that cute huh and they kind of hurt <laughs> interesting huh i'm down to try some do you have any uh, around that i can put in maybe my hair's pretty short now but it could be fun they were just like a really good alternative to a bobby pin because a bobby pin would fall out Sometimes, depending where yeah, you Yeah, and a it. banana clip is, like, cool. It's, like, No, the banana and... clip is different than those little clips. I'm talking about two different things. Oh. Or they were, like, a claw. Oh, I know that thing. Yeah. My sister used to wear those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know the claw. The claw was, like, the big one that you, <sighs> you would put in the back to hold, like, your whole hair. Yeah, yeah. But then the the little butterfly clips were the tiny the versions The claw does of this, those. right? Yes, it does Look, that. this is the visual representation of what she's talking about for those who haven't exactly. seen it. Exactly. But let me tell you, boy, the worst of the worst is when you're hanging out, you either have butterfly clips in or that little claw thing. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when you had long hair and you're out in the world somewhere, it's fucking hot. Your hair's out of your face. Yeah, my whole life. You go, you go to like redo your ponytail or something as it's falling out and your hair tie breaks. And now you're fucked. And oh, you're like, oh yeah. my God, what do I do? Yeah. Now my hair's just in my face. Absolute nightmare situation. So the claw situation was sort of like, you know, your your plan for the day, right? That my hair is in this, it's it's got to be up here. You, there were so many times, because you have like, they're cheap, it's plastic. Yeah. You know, and I would like lay down somewhere, put my head down, the claw smashes and breaks. One of the legs is gone. Oh my God. Now, like the spring breaks. Yeah, the whole thing fucking comes apart. You screwed. Good luck with your hair for the rest of the day. That sounds horrible. Horrible. I remember the claw being like that brown color. You know what I'm yeah, talking about? Yeah, they sell different colors. Yeah. But the brown, most popular one was like the brown, like brown, black, brown, burgundy, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I didn't use those, but I, my sister did, and I've seen them. My mm -hmm. mom did. I've seen those. Okay, I just thought of one. What? Live strong bracelets. Huge trend when that I was, was in middle school. That was a huge trend. I was, I don't know how old I was. Older than middle school. It wasn't as popular well, it, it, for my age It was group. just starting to blow up and it was at the point where it was sort of like a fashion piece. Yeah, it, it was, was like, in high school, I think. Yeah, so it was, like, I think I was either sixth or seventh grade, but uh, regardless, I was a little, I was a little baby Julian in middle school and um so the live strong bracelets were super dope and i'm i'm almost positive that i didn't have one and so i went on ebay and it probably was a knockoff honestly now that i think about it but i bought one off ebay and it was like probably like 20 bucks like a ridiculous price yep. because they were like cool Right, but like, wasn't the whole point of the to list? support to support? Yeah, yeah. but the, but what I, my point is, it was at the stage where it was like a fashion piece. Right. So you had to get one any way you could. So you wore a Livestrong bracelet, at least in the middle school world that I was living in my brain. And so I didn't have one, and I thought it would be so rad to have one, right? But it gets more interesting. I didn't just buy one off eBay and wear it. I bought one off eBay, and I and I think somewhere be between ordering and off eBay. I might have like just decided to do it from the beginning, but I think at some point I was like, this girl that I really like doesn't have a live strong bracelet. Oh fuck dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. You better watch out. <laughs> um should I say her name? Whatever you want. Her name was Sophie. Aww. And I was like, she's really pretty. I wanted to give her this live strong bracelet. Maybe she'll like me. And we didn't like know each other. We maybe had a couple conversations, you know, like Oh, but you like What time her. is it? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> but to you, they were so much more. Oh, my God. Yes. Um, so I got the Live Strong bracelet. I wake up. I'm like, okay, here. I'm going to fucking do it. I'm going to fucking do it. I'm like sick to my stomach because I'm nervous. And it's oh. before school. It's like A period going into period one. So there's like a, a little gap because I had I had A, per a period PE. 
So your boy's just in his <laughs> PE clothes. Wait, why does every embarrassing story that involves a girl also involve PE clothes? Because PE, because oh PE, because PE was the source of ninety nine percent of my childhood <laughs> trauma. That is why. <laughs> PE sucks. No, you loved it. I loved it later on. Anyway, I am in my PE clothes. It's early. The bell's ringing. I see Sophie in the yard or like the you know basketball courts. So I like walk up to her. And I'm like, hey. Wait, time out. So at this point, you had one bracelet for you and one for I'm her? I'm almost positive I didn't have one. So you just bought one on eBay. I'm almost positive, And yeah. decided that you just wanted to give it to Sophie. Yes, because... And bypass yourself. Well, yeah, because I... Did, well, I, that's why I think I decided after ordering it that I was going to give it to her, because otherwise I would have ordered two. Right. But I only ordered one, and it's not like I could just like order things. You know, you put an eBay order in, that's like your you mom's going to gonna be mad at you, and that's it for a couple months. Like Right. Anyway. Well, yeah, you need her credit card and yeah, all that stuff, something. right? Yeah. yeah. And it's not like I can just like get a package and like take it to my room. She's seeing all the mail that comes in, not me. I'm at right. school. <laughs> so I walk up to her. I'm like, hey, I got you a Live Strong bracelet. And she's like, thanks. And I was like, all right, I'll see you later. And then that was it. <laughs> was Julia, like, no! And I was like, fuck, I'm such a stupid idiot. Like, sh- she doesn't even care. <laughs> Like, it's a stupid fucking bracelet. She does not care that I just did that. She's like, okay, where do I put this now? What trash can do I put this in? And I was like, and I remember thinking like, oh, she's going to like me now that I gave her a bracelet. But no, she was or like. she's going to think you're interested or yeah, something. Yeah, no. It was just like, here you go. And then I ran away. And then that was that. That was, that was, I had game. Julian. What? <laughs> so cute and sad and sweet and pure and just adorable. So you never, nothing ever happened with you and Sophie? No. I had a crush on her for probably most of that. I'm pretty sure it was sixth grade. Um, Might have been seventh, but I think it was sixth grade. I'm pretty sure I had a crush on her for most of the year, even when she had like a boyfriend. Oh. But dude, middle school was fucking rough. Yeah. Middle school was rough, dude. High school, it's chump change compared to middle school. Yeah, middle school is definitely the worst. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Live strong. Oh my god. Yeah. That was bad. Do you have any do you have any other? Um well, my favorite toys like when I was younger than that, like 7, like a kid, I didn't do like a lot of Barbies and stuff, but I would watch a lot of like Lamb Chops or like Nickelodeon and you know all the the TV at the time, they would have just nonstop toy commercials. I mean, it's not any different than it is now, but they were always, you know, the same groups of toys and those like jingles and everything became like super famous and like ingrained in your head. Like the, there was like a, my buddy, which is just a fucking person doll. (laughs) (laughs) My buddy, my buddy, my buddy. And you're like, it gets fucking stuck in your head and you see it. So then you're like brainwashed into wanting these things as a kid, even though I have no desire for a person doll, you know? Yeah. The the toys that really appealed to me were either like something I could really play with or an animal. Like mm-hmm. I remember I had this like it was a stick and it had wheels on the bottom of it and you would push it like a vacuum cleaner. Oh my god. And there was just like a shitty little half stuffed dog that would just go like this <laughs> because because you're pushing it. Yeah. I love that thing. Yeah. But um, some of the more trendier toys that I really enjoyed were a skip it, mm-hmm. which I fucking loved. Where you put the hook around your ankle and then you... Yeah. It's just a circle that you put around your ankle and then you just... I'm like, I'm wondering now, like, because I've thought about it a lot as an adult. It's such an awkward motion. Like when you start doing... You know when you're hula hooping and it's all like pretty fluid? Yeah. And it's... The skip it was not like that at all. Well, because it's like you put it around one foot. You're, you're essentially doing like... It's like hopscotch in place. No, it's like doing weight training on one leg all the time. Because the weight is only relying on one ankle and the other one's just hopping. Yeah, so like think of your whatever this outside, like the outside of your glute and like your adductor or whatever, or if that's your abductor, I don't know. Yeah. But like that, that leg is working. And unless you switch the legs, which like who cares? You know, I'm seven. I'm going to put it on my right foot and jump with my left. Like mm-hmm. you're just sort of like doing this. Not that it's particularly strenuous but it's like 
an exercise or play thing that only works one side of your body. Yeah, which is kind of problematic in a way. Like, there's probably a kid that did so many skippets that, like, their right leg was fucking bumping and their left one was not. For sure. You might have ca- caused this, a f- complete growth imbalance at that point. You're a developing <laughs> kid. But, uh, so it would count how many times yeah, you... Yeah, because it had a little digital thing on it, right? Yeah. Well, it wasn't digital. It was just an analog. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mine was. The oh. original one was. I think they came out with more advanced right. ones. Yeah. And it was plastic, like a really thin piece of plastic. Yeah. So I went through, and it, it made a terrible noise because I would do it like on the oh, asphalt, God. like on the driveway. Yeah. And it, you, it just sounded like plastic being yeah. dragged across asphalt. Like, yeah. It's super loud. Yeah. And it would get all like dinged up and nasty and uh i had gone through several skip bits because they would go flying off my leg because the plastic had broken (laughs) yes so you're in your driveway like it's like you're both your legs are out and you're just sort of like stepping side Mm -hmm. to side almost that's sort of the motion yeah and then it would just go fucking flying into the street because we broke it but I also had one, like now thinking back, mm-hmm. which is really funny. I was a gymnast. I did a lot of gymnastics. Mm-hmm. And there is an event in rhythmic gymnastics where they have essentially a ribbon dancer, which yeah. is what I had. It's yeah. a stick with a long ribbon on it. I've seen that. And they do that in gymnastics and it's fucking beautiful mm-hmm. and it's, you know, whatever. But I just had one to wave around in the backyard. <laughs> And I fucking love that thing. And the commercials for it were so amazing. They're like, you can do it in a circle. And it's like, oh, it's so pretty. Oh, <laughs> fucking God. And oh, well, recently I've been playing a lot of Cat's Cradle. Mm-hmm. I've told that story on the podcast before. I always played with string and, you know, I just had a lot of alone time as a kid. My brother wouldn't fucking play with me. He hated me. He was hanging out with his cool boyfriends and i was the one that was upstairs in my room looking out the window being like man i wish they would fucking play with me (laughs) so i would go to the garage get my fucking ribbon dancer go up into the woods and go la 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 (laughs) (laughs) that's so cute that's me though that's what i did (laughs) i would go go do my skip it in the driveway hear a horrible sound get a little bored Realize I'm alone. Go go poke my hamster in his cage. Fuck, he's sleeping. It's daytime. Go to the garage. Get my ribbon dancer. Walk into the woods. La, 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 la. <laughs> Is it time for dinner yet? How much fucking time can I kill? <laughs> oh, my God. You're so cute. Oh, my, oh my God. That's like... <laughs> you as a kid, it's like, it melts me. It's like so cute. <laughs> But the the girl that lived a few houses down from me that I grew up with was like, she was a little weird like me too. So we had each other. We were really good yeah. friends. But she had a ribbon dancer too sometimes. For sure. And if she was around, be like, yo, Libby, you want to play fucking ribbon dancer? She's like, yes, bitch. <laughs> we spent an entire day one time jumping off a picnic table with an umbrella to see if we could fly. It didn't work. But Did like, you hurt yourself? No. I was Damn, fine. though, that's a victory. Yeah, we were those kids. Yeah. I, that was also around the same time that I bought, I, I had a book that these these aren't trends except for the toys I guess but we bought um or somebody had like a book of really like really close up pictures of plants and things mm-hmm. like flowers and so my mom got a dis- a disposable like Kodak camera and I was like man I love those pictures like they really inspired me mm-hmm. and I'm little yeah. so I went out back and I started taking all these pictures of all these like leaves and like you know pretty stuff and then we got the film developed and they were all fucking blurry because it's clearly with a macro lens and I have no idea what that you means. were just like getting really close <laughs> to them <laughs> oh like my god 20 pictures of nothing but just like blurry close up grass oh that's so cute so bad because you were trying to like take close pictures but you didn't have a macro lens right. so you were just like it's blurry yeah but you can't tell because well, you're no, looking are... through the little viewfinder so to me it to looks you. cool yeah. yeah but how is how is a child supposed to even know what a macro lens is and why those pictures are not showing up when you take it that close that's what I thought I thought it was just a book of somebody really close to shit yeah I was like, Click I, fucking bait. This boy thinks he can write a, a book about being close to shit. Watch me. I'm even closer. It was terrible. Wow. Well, damn. Anyways, I had to skip it in a ribbon dancer. I really liked both mm. of those. And yeah. I had Polly Pockets. Mm-hmm. I didn't really like Barbies, but I did like Polly Pockets because mm-hmm. I'm a Virgo and I like little small things. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was really cute. But now, as an adult, I'm like, that is a fucking horrible choking hazard. Mm-hmm. Things were like this fucking big and mm-hmm. you would just, man, it was stupid. Yeah. 
My, this wasn't a trend, but I collected cards. I collected sports cards and Pokemon cards. Oh, hell yeah. I still have a lot of my sports cards, actually, which is a really cool thing that I'm glad I still have because I fucking collected them. I know you do. I've always, we've moved them to every house we've ever lived yeah. in. It's important. It's pretty dope. They're in the sleeves and everything. I used to trade them with my friends. I would go to card shows. I used to wear one of those, like, puka shell necklaces. Yeah. But mine was a little different, but that was a thing, too. That was definitely a trend for me, Just too. Just like yeah. this. Puka these, shells. These chokers. They were dope. If you had puka shells, you were fucking sick. I've just always liked chokers. Yeah. Like, that has never changed. I've always, like, worn a choker. Mm-hmm. I think there was a, a period, like, where in college, obviously, I couldn't be wearing, like, jewelry all the time. you get in trouble because of softball. Yeah. But, like, that period of time and, like, a little after college when I was, like, I'm an, I'm an adult. I didn't wear chokers, and then mm-hmm. I was like, no, nah, I'm wearing chokers. Yeah, back to it. <laughs> back to it. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I was going to say puka shells, and then also frosted tips. I did that. You did that? Yeah. Oh, my God. Except that more was like orange tips, because I just did a bad job. You did it yourself? No, I think my mom. mom Your mom did, did it. it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure my mom did it. I definitely didn't go to a place. Oh, no. So, actually, my mom might have done it once, but my aunt did it. Yeah. She was a hairdresser. And we, they lived out in Boston, so we would go visit them. And while I was out there, she I'd be like, Aunt Teresa, hair. can you dye my hair? And she would Aww. in her kitchen. And uh, yeah, I had like blonde hair. I had like orange blonde hair. I had I had an earring. I did the left ear pierce thing. That Which would... I always ask you all the time. Just let me try and put an earring in there. You know, people have asked me to pierce my nose. Which I feel like that's just such a, a hassle and asking for it. You don't have to pierce your nose though. You could just get one of those little fake magnet ones if you wanted it for like a day, you know? Huh. I, I would sooner try that than put a hole through my nose. Yeah. yeah. I well, have no desire to have my nose pierced. Me neither. Just because it would I think be it, like... I think it does look really cool on some people. I totally agree. Yeah. I really like it, but yeah. it just like... I think it would bother me too much. Yeah, probably. Well, them's our trends. I don't know. That was like kind of a funny. It took a turn. I'd not expect to remember that story. Man. Like live strong. Of all fucking things that a kid in sixth grade would want to spend their fucking money on eBay to buy something. Right? It's weird. It's weird. It's so weird and it's senseless. It's like everything revolves around what's cool and what's going to make you look cool. Yeah. That sucks. It's just a struggle to be so like not lame. And that's that was like all of middle school for me, just trying so fucking hard not to be lame. Well, I remember, yeah, in middle school, I totally remember Live Strong bracelets. But that's also like, I think like you said, in their height, they were like a little more expensive, like 10 or $20. I remember them being like five or mm-hmm, something. Yeah. But like, I think the whole poll was that a lot of the proceeds are going to cancer research. And... I guess in hindsight now it seems kind of harmless because I've totally read comments of people people being like, only kids that wear Gucci and Supreme are cool in my school. And I'm like, oh my God. Brutal. Fucking brutal. Dude. That sucks. How I, expensive? Whose parents can yeah, afford that? It's much it's it's like way more expensive to be a middle schooler these days and be cool. I know, but it's also like you're I remember, you know, even with like the Sambas, right? Yeah. I think they were like $40 or something. But that's mm-hmm. like, you know, sneakers hadn't really reached that like peak where they are now where it's like $100 to like get a good pair of sneakers. Mm-hmm. They were, you know, that was sort of like a reasonable price range in there, like 40 50 $60, you know, it wasn't insane. But like for a child's purchase, when they're going to grow out of those shoes, you know, in a year or two, mm-hmm. it's like, it's a, an investment, you know, and for a parent to like spend money it's like that your mom loves you so much and she wants you to fit in she wants you to be happy and comfortable so they'll like spend money on you to feel that way you know Mm -hmm. but i i would feel so terrible trying to explain to my kid like i want you to feel that way but like gucci is not what's gonna like spending eight hundred dollars on a pair of sandals like it's not because i don't fucking love you yeah my guy it's because that's ridiculously expensive yeah yeah (laughs) You know, yeah, but it's just a, hard when you're in that kid mindset, know, though. And, and you you're just like, need to, if my parents love me, they would help me get this know, right now. I know. Why won't you just get this? Why won't me? you just get me? That's that? all. That's all I want. Yeah. I'm easy. Okay, just buy me this, and I'll be a good kid. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Unlike my niece, who asked for paper towels and orange. <laughs> She's a gem for Christmas. She's a literal gem. I love her. 
You remember Nike SB? No, what's Nike that? Nike skateboard. What was that? <laughs> she just had a dream. You she just woke dream? herself up. You wake yourself up? What are you doing? You're just laying on the floor? She's a goof. What's Nike SB? Nike skateboarding. It was a line of their shoes. It still exists, I'm sure. No. But in high school, I was like kind of obsessed with them. Um, they had a bunch of different cool colorways. And most of them were like four or $500. So I would buy knockoffs, right? Because that's all I could afford. Mm-hmm. And there was one called the Heineken. I don't know why I remember this, but it was like, it was the Heineken color. So it was green and red. Um, and it was the version of the shoe. And I bought the knockoffs. And I was like, fuck, these are dope. And I wore them to school one day and one of my friends on the baseball team who was just like a downright troll he I think probably heard me talking about them to someone because I was like hyped about them and that we had a Greek theater at our school an outdoor Greek theater and we would oftentimes do strength and conditioning in the Greek so we would have like Tuesdays and Thursdays we would meet at the Greek and do like sprints up and down and shit stuff like that so it was Greek day so we went over to the Greek and I'm changing in my baseball workout outfit different shoes obviously and we did this thing that day where we sprint up the Greek and then bear crawl down, Ooh. which is like upper body hell because your no, shoulders you. are just like bearing all your weight the whole time now. And your shoes are just getting like fucking drags because it's like it's cement. Yeah. So we're doing a couple. I'm like exhausted. Everyone's tired. We're like, fuck this. And then I look over at Logan and I'm like, what the fuck? Is he wearing my shoes while he does this? And he was. He wanted to fucking prank me. By taking my new shoes <gasps> and scuffing them to all hell, doing that's so mean. It was I was so pissed. I was like, "How fucking dare you, dude?" And he was older than me, so I couldn't really do anything. I was like, Aww. "But I was so pissed." I was like, "You're funny, and like you do shit that's across the line, and it's funny, but like, why would you do that?" And I was so mad. And they were ruined. I'm sorry. They were ruined. That's so sad. No, no, it's fine. It's just like one of those weird it's stories. Sad. I feel like buying things that were knockoff online really wasn't a thing for me or like on trend until I got to college. Yeah. Well, and I realized that every girl. It was girl, the same time period that I got those. Every girl that I knew had fake Louis Vuitton because that whole, that or print. fake Von Dutch or whatever. It was mostly like Louis Vuitton. Well, yeah. I lived in Boston. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't a thing where I grew up. But right. like once I got to Boston and I got to college, everybody had these like fake Louis Vuitton wallets, fake Louis Vuitton. Like think of 90s Paris Hilton with mm-hmm. that like print. Yeah. And then the rainbow one came out and everyone was losing their minds. So everybody had a fake one. And I never felt the desire to buy a fake one. Or I was just like, yeah. Ashley, I know you, you know, like you do not own a $300 handbag. Okay. Yeah. Like we fooling? go to the grocery store, we live together. We can afford to eat cucumbers and buy one loaf of bread. Okay. Do not pull your $4 out of yeah. your $300 Louis Vuitton handbag. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're broke. It's so funny. You pay the same rent as me. I literally <laughs> see your wallet right now <laughs> and there's nothing in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she has it. Yeah. I even bought knockoff Pokemon cards, but it wasn't on purpose. I think I was trying to find some rare cards and I bought them off a website and they came and I was like, the back of them was not the right shade of blue. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, these feel weird. No. But yeah, knockoffs be like, trends be like. Yeah. You know what was a big trend when I was in like middle and high school too? Also, I've, I don't know why, but like all the things that I really liked were like toys or mm-hmm. like things that you could go outside and play with. Yeah. Do you remember devil sticks? Yes, I do remember those. This, so they were like two sticks mm-hmm. and then there was a long one with tassels on either yeah. side and you would just like go like this and <laughs> toss it up. And there was always like one or two kids at school that were like way too fucking good at it. And then I would be like, all right, dude, I want to, I didn't have any, but I was like, I want to try because mm-hmm. I liked them. Yeah, it yeah. looked really cool. And so I would do it and I would fucking smash my fingers. Like I would get super hurt and then it'd be like this is why i can't have devil sticks but thank you for letting me do that yeah yeah devil sticks i remember those it's like baton sort of thing right it's, it's like, literally three batons it's so weird two sticks and then one that you toss up in the middle with the sticks yeah peach what are you doing she's like rolling around the floor come here oh you got got well, I want to see what you guys remember from the trends that you were part of as a kid because uh, I know we're going to have missed some. And I know some of the ones that pop up in comments are going to be like, oh, my God, I can't believe I remember. I Dunkaroos. Remember 
bagel bites, toaster strudels, fruit by the foot, fruit roll up. Now I'm just naming now all just my naming favorite foods. foods when I was a kid. <laughs> She's so cute. Oh, um, what is it? Ty Ty toys. Yeah, Beanie Babies. Beanie Babies. Yeah. I loved Beanie Babies. I had Beanie Babies. It turns out they weren't going to be worth something. No, but they were even so if you kept cute. The tag on. Yeah. I saved a lot of mine. I like my mom gave a bunch of them back to me, and then I had them in the house. And Peach destroyed a lot of them. But what I used to do is I used to take like my little earrings and I would pierce all of their ears or their noses with my earrings. And that's where I would keep my jewelry. That's actually dope. Is on my Beanie Babies. That's so cool. Yeah. I never did that. So when my mom gave them back to me, most of them had ear and nose piercings. That's so funny. What an efficient way to like, that's a Virgo thing. Thank you. Yeah. Like this, the little like worm one, the rainbow worm. Yeah. You had like a nice little nose. I remember the rainbow worm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Those are fun. I really like them. Well, them's the trends. I'm curious to see what we forgot or what you guys had uh, as part of your childhood trends. Let us know. We're like relatively close in age, but it's always funny to hear like your parents or. Yeah. Lame. (laughs) Wow, dude. (laughs) That's messed up. What's wrong with you? Thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you for listening and watching our podcast. And happy 11th birthday, Marble. And happy 11th birthday, Marble. It is now birthday month. We have four dog Gemini birthdays coming up. Um, Lord help us. Lord fucking help us. I'll be making some birthday vlogs for the dogs this year. So don't worry. We're not going to miss those. And uh, we'll see you on the next podcast and on stream all week. You guys be good and have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.